Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Elden Ring PvP and another weapon showcase. Today we are taking a look at the Stormhawk Axe. This is a weapon that you can get in a number of ways, and is one that you may recognize if you have ever summoned Nefeli to fight alongside you. She wields two of them, and of course, if you meet her in the village of the Albanarx and then proceed to kill her like the monster you are, you will get two of them as a drop. The alternative ways to get it are just by looting them from corpses. You can find one on a body near the fortified manor, the first floor of Landell Royal Capital, and the other one you can find on a body in Castle Soul. I'll have an image on screen to the two locations where you can just pick one up, as opposed to having to be murderous and kill Nefeli, because why would anyone want to do that, you know? Anyway. Getting started with the basics of this weapon, it requires 19 strength, 15 dexterity to wield, and it weighs 5.5 units. The skill of the weapon is Thunderstorm, and you are stuck with it because it is a somber weapon. At plus 10 it has a physical base damage of 318, a C scaling in strength, and a D scaling in dexterity. So the scaling on this one isn't terribly special, and it is a quality weapon, unfortunately. On the bright side, it is able to be supported by the high base damage, so it is what it is. Now, as far as the pros of the weapon, the damage is pretty decent, to be honest. It is going to, like I said, be supported by that high base damage, but aside from that, the weapon itself does have amazing hyper armor on the skill specifically, and when attacking with the weapon, it does guard break people relatively easily. Uh, it's not going to really do too much work against something like a fingerprint shield, for example, but if someone blocks with their weapon, just for the sake of an example, uh, you'll break through their guard if they block with the weapon pretty darn easily. Now, of course, the big pro of this thing is the skill. Thunderstorm is awesome. With Thunderstorm, you spin the weapon around, and you have three hits from your initial spin with the axe itself and the little whirlwind that you generate, but you also have a fourth hit, or should I say a first hit, from when the lightning strikes the weapon to begin with. And then on top of that, you can follow it up by continuing to go with your input, and if you time it well, you can actually roll catch your opponent with the additional two swings that you get, because those two swings have a bit of forward momentum to them, so if your opponent is going to roll backwards, you can just keep on going forwards with it, or if they roll to the side, you can kind of chase them down a little bit by aiming towards them as you go for those extra attacks. So, overall, pretty darn nice, and then on top of that, it actually buffs the weapon for 20 seconds. But the big thing here is that initial set of three swings. That's what we want to really focus on landing when we're using this weapon and using this skill. Because if you hit with your first swing, you're guaranteed to hit with all three. And that's great. You can deal a ton of damage with this thing, which is exactly what you want in a skill. That's kind of the name of the game. So, keep that in mind, and uh, have fun with it. One thing that I had a good time with was putting on a uh, talisman that increased the amount of damage I dealt based off the number of hits. So, Millicent's Prosthesis, for example, would be pretty good. Rotten Wing Sword Insignia would also be quite nice for this, because that will cause that effect to activate. And on top of that, you can just go ahead and throw on the buff into your Physic to do that as well. Stack it all together, throw on Millicent's Prosthesis, the Standard Wing Sword Insignia, the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, and the Physic buff. And you basically have yourself uh, the Regalia of Eochid, or the, uh, the Greatsword one that I keep forgetting the name of. But you've basically got that, but with more hyper armor. So what's not to love? Another thing I like about this weapon a lot, people have a bad habit of jumping into the attack and not expecting it. That's one thing that I've noticed and I've really enjoyed with this weapon and have been able to take advantage of pretty well. People, they don't necessarily realize how long the hitbox lingers on the, uh, on the weapon art. So even if they do successfully avoid it, sometimes people will just run straight into it after the third swing anyway, and that lingering hitbox from the wind blowing around ends up clipping them. So, 
that's quite nice. And I've had a, quite a few people actually just completely kill themselves, just finish themselves off by trying to come at me while well, that is still an active hitbox. So, pretty fun to use because of that. Now that said, the cons. Because it's an axe, so of course there are a lot. First and foremost, the moveset, kind of garbage. Just to be honest, it is really kind of a trash moveset. It's not good at chasing people down, you don't really have much in the way of range on it, so that doesn't help out anything either. Um, and realistically, the damage, it could be better with the base moveset itself. The weapon really does strongly rely on the skill to be successful. So, aside from that, this weapon does feel as though it should have probably been a paired weapon, because Belly uses two, you are able to get two, and I feel like it should be one of those sort of two-for-one type things going on. You know, something like how they had the twin swords in Dark Souls 3, or the, uh, that pair of axes, the winged knight axes, I think is what they were called. Something along those lines I feel like would have been beneficial for this weapon, but instead they just give you two and tell you, hey, go ahead and power stance it. Which I didn't bother doing because with power stancing, of course, if you stick two weapons of any kind together, they'll always outperform a single weapon. So there's really not much of a sense in me doing that for the sake of a showcase. That's just my two cents on the matter there. That said, with certain weapons that absolutely would need it, like daggers, for example, when the time for dagger showcases comes around, which will be soon, I'll have to reconsider that thought of power stancing for daggers. At the end of the day, it's a fun weapon that is heavily reliant on the skill, and you can really tune that skill with some certain key talismans to make it extremely dangerous. That all said, this is the last fight in the video. Let me know what you guys think about this weapon. One other thing I did want to mention before I do forget is that it is great at creating an area of denial for your opponents. They can't get close to you because of that, so it helps with zoning. But anyway, enjoy this last fight. Let me know what you think about the weapon. Thank you all for stopping by, and I'll see you all next time.